You are listening to Level Up Your Gaming Podcast, episode 92, Deep Dive into the World of Darkness Stereotypes. Today we talk about World of Darkness Stereotypes. Sort of. We fall off topic a bit and discuss stereotypes in general in tabletop RPGs. We also discuss how it's different breaking these stereotypes as a player versus being a GM. If you'd like to participate in the discussion or leave us feedback, you can contact us at levelupyourgamingpodcast at gmail.com or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash levelupyourgaming. If you like the content and want to hear more of the show, subscribe and we'll ensure you don't miss an episode. New episodes come out almost every Wednesday. Also, please review, tell a friend about the podcast, or share with your gaming group. Now sit back and enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Level of Your Gaming Podcast. My name is Aaron, and joining me in person once again, his glass walkers don't always hate red talons, Jared. That is very true. That is true. That is a true statement. How you doing, Jared? <laughs> Not bad. How about you? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, uh, I, I brought it up in the last podcast, but approaching the wedding here very soon. Uh, yeah. So again, if uh, if there is a, a missed episode, do apologize. You know, you know, timing here is is a little funky, and uh, priority has to go to you know future wife and wedding stuff. Right is now. it on Saturday? It's on a Sunday. Okay, excellent. Because I'm going to be flying back from like Georgia on the Friday before. <laughs> you know, you'll have a day to to re- relax. Well, a day to make sure my suit's all done, make sure everything is all ready to go. Yeah, yeah, no, you'll be you'll be good. So, but excellent. Yeah, because. It's weird. They've started scheduling my travel a little bit more. Um, it's not like, Jared, quick, we need you on a plane to blah, 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 to the Yucatan. It's like, what? It, it, it's like they've they've kind of actually ske- started scheduling my goddamn travel. It's, it's, it's amazing. So, like, I was supposed to go down to Georgia this week. Uh, the equipment didn't make it down there, so they were like, come next week. I'm like, okay. And then they're like, and then the first week in December, you, sir, are going to be going to Canada. Like, not pleased about having to go to Canada, but okay. Uh, I thought you had, uh, you had avoided that. Uh, uh, my that boss had tried very, very uh, – he, he, he told me, he's like, I gave it my all. Like, I, I begged him, like, please don't make Jared go. Um, Because, like, they're all flying, like, first class and business class. My ass is going to be on a plane for six hours and coach. Not looking forward to that. Not looking forward. Not looking forward to going up there with all the COVID protocols and, like, like, you have to get a test, like, 72 hours before you get on the plane and... It has to be a negative test, and then you have to show it at the, at the airport, and then you got to show it at customs, and then you got to, you know, and, and we're not just taking one flight. We're flying uh, from Chicago to Calgary. Well, from Georgia. I have to fly down to Georgia. Ooh. Yeah. Ow. Well, like, because they, they want us all on the same plane. Why can't they route a flight from Georgia to Chicago and then bounce you up to? Well, like, how about I just get on a flight in Chicago and go straight to yeah, but you don't. You have you don't send me an hour in the wrong direction. I mean, <laughs> it's like two, two hours in the wrong direction. Still, it sucks. Yeah, literally, we're going to be passing over Chicago on the way back because we're going. I'm I'm literally going to go from Chicago to Georgia, Georgia to Calgary, which will fly over Chicago. I'm pretty sure if if I know my geography at all. I think we're flying over Chicago, and then from Calgary to. Uh, Straight to the to the Vancouver. Oof. I'm like, I just fly straight from Chicago to Vancouver. They're direct flights. But like they well, want the, us... the mystery eludes us and our listeners. It does. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got on travel. I'm sorry, guys and gals. I'm really sorry about that. Um, but yeah, no, that sounds awful. Uh, but it, at least it's more consistent for you. So it is. Um, so what's our topic for today? So um, I shouldn't say that. I can't like I've wanted to talk about this topic. Yes. Um our topic today is we're gonna do another deep dive into the world of darkness. We haven't done one of these in a little while. And we're gonna talk about kind of overcoming the stereotypes when you look at like the clans, the tribes, things like that. I and because this is a, a topic of a passion of mine. Um it, it's really overcoming stereotypes written in books. 
Okay. White Wolf is one of the leaders in stereotyping. It is. Well, the whole point of the clan tribe dynamic is to actually, I believe because vampire came first, then it was werewolf. Oh God. Yes. So in vampire, each clan has a stereotype against, uh, they're all stereotype beyond that. The class. Each clan has a stereotype. The yes. Ventru are, are these political kingly like uh, vampires. The Bruja are these rebellious, um, uh, rebellious, fiery kind of street vampires, punks. street punk kind of vampires. The, the Asamite clan is uh, assassins. assassins and all mysterious and quiet and, and yada yada. The, and each clan has their own preconceived notions of the other clans. Of the other clans. And it follows along the, the, the stereotypes. It really does. And literally, White Wolf is, is the leader in stereotyping. But D&D is close on its heels. Because all elves are snooty. Actually, all, yeah, elves, all, 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 all you know, classes and stuff have different stereotypes of the other classes. So, right, I mean, like all fighters are... Rah! Sorry, I guess you say races have different well, stereotypes of the races. Even the skills bottleneck them into a certain... being a certain way. A fighter can't talk. Which is why when you look at the uh, the the current... I mean, r- really right before the, the current iteration of D&D 5e, uh, everything was like, if you're going to make a, a cleric, you're going to do like a dwarf, and like if you're going to do um, like a, a mage, it better be a... Or you're going to do a bard, it better be an elf. If you're going to do a... Like like all these things, because you're trying to min-max and get the best combos out of things, like you create these stereotypical characters. Like you don't ever see like the orc mage. Like it doesn't work. It'd be a terrible... Even though ca- you played an orc bard. I did play an orc bard. Um, <laughs> and- but it wasn't effective min uh, points-wise. Points wise, no, it was terrible. It was actually hor- horrible in terms of playing it because the, I mean, had I known that the game was going to be more focused on min maxing stuff, I probably would have picked something definitely more comboable. And 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 that's the thing. There there that shouldn't exist. It shouldn't exist where it's like, oh man, to because there there should be orc bards who beat on a battle drum and dum 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 bra, you know it. I don't know, orc punk or orc heavy metal, um, you know, or hell, orc short tunes. I don't care. You know, like, like in, that's... In, in, the, in the lower levels, my character sort of was that. I had, like, a mandolin and, like, I had, like, the, the thunder spells and, like, I was, like, the god of rock and, like... <laughs> exactly, but, like, it, it should be opened up to even being, like, your character... My, my character's an orc who enjoys playing classical elven music. Why? Because it's complicated. Yeah, literally, that's his response because it's complicated. Because the first movement is 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 yeah. I'll even do this in a rock voice. The first movement is 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 about sadness, and sadness combined with water, and the con the the elemental distinction between the both. You know, from tears come water, and 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 really the second part is about. Reviving yourself. Fire. Notice how fire arrives. Why is that impossible? Why does why do role playing companies God bless them all because I mean they, they they make my 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 passions like yelling at model companies when you build model aircraft. But why do they make it in fucking possible to make your orc who enjoys classical composition and really dives deeply into that? Well, so, I mean, again, it, it all sparks from the root of kind of where everything came from. And again, most most RPGs follow the arc of where D&D came from, which was the kind of the class system. And so this way you don't have a bunch of paladins who are all being, you just don't have a party of paladins or you don't have a party of clerics right. or something like that. It's designed um, to, to say, like, you should have a party of a mage, a cleric, a paladin, a blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and you want to have a little bit of diversity of, like, the classes and stuff in there. When it comes to, like, the, the racial stuff, though, which is what they ended up doing in the most recent book of D&D, is they said, you know what, let's just get rid of the racial modifiers that you get at the start. I don't think it gets rid of them in terms of, like, the benefits that you get from them, which mm-hmm. is sort of still problematic because then you're still shoehorned into races that make the most sense but it it does start to sort of address the issue where it's like if you wanted to make that orc mage it could work it could work but you know it, it it's even beyond that when you look at the tolkien-esque 
I'm sorry, I'm going to piss off some people with my blasphemy. Yes, I know. All dwarves are, are short and grumpy, you know? Short and... Murmur. Bring me ale. You know, there's no there's no dwarf who's like, I, I enjoy a good Chardonnay, you know? <laughs> but, but ironically, those stereotypes have worked very well for you in a game that, like you did, like in Bod Thane. I was, did. Which was you played heavily on those stereotypes, but it was really good like it, it was except for when you looked at you know like um uh, uh the, the 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 mafia guy um oh i for, i forgot his name um uh, but like he enjoyed salads well yeah but he had also cultured himself outside of he, he the had. society and that's the thing it made him different it made him distinct and it made him a memorable npc even though we can't remember his name right now let's not talk about that oh it's burn um but <laughs> I'm just trying to get you a laugh there. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's um, when, when we sit down as storytellers and players, OK, we should be really looking at the person we're building. Right. The the NPC that we are building. OK, we should be looking at core functions of every creature right any 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 um i i i guess sentient creature okay and 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 be going rather than saying like my character for example let's let's take uh the venture vampires right and and compare and contrast them against the the silverfang werewolves right the silverfang werewolves are a a tribe of kings they are typically pompous venture Typically but, pompous. But, but again, the dichotomy is that you have from vampire to werewolf is they're sort of the same. They are. They, they're they, supposed they, to sort of mirror each other. Right. But I think that's wrong. I, I think it's 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 horribly flawed. And to level up gaming, we have to break out of the We have to take these stereotypes and start ripping them up and saying, no, you know, just because someone is born into a uh, uh, even if someone is literally born into something close knit like a family of pompous assholes, right? Every once in a while, someone is not a pompous asshole. Someone's like, you know what? No, no, this is, the, you know what? I enjoy actually living out in the woods with a, with a tent. And they're like, you don't like the mansion. No, I don't. And sometimes you have people who are raised in complete, you know, hillbilly communities that become complete asshole coal miner or, or coal barons. You know what I mean? They lose their entire sense of self of and, and become a different person. Um, you know, they, they look at this town and they're like, I hate this town. Even though the town values hard work, you know, honesty, and they're like, fuck this place. I'm gonna get out of here and I'm gonna I'm gonna move to some high society like Chicago. You know, and they and they do. And they, and they're jerks, even though they were raised in a community of of hardworking people there's always people who break the mold okay now the trick of good storytelling of good narration is and and this this sucks the the, the i hate saying this but it's 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 the god's honest truth sometimes stereotypes are there because they're you know prevalent in a group of people it's the truth it yes. sucks you know like <laughs> if you grew up in the town where i grew up you know where like there's 200 freaking people all right three roads yeah they're 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 a little bit closed-minded about new things okay they are it's a stereotype it's an existent stereotype as a member of the appalachian mountains okay as a as a, as a son of the mountains okay i can tell you a lot of stereotypes are true okay it sucks but they're true okay they're out there <laughs> and there are whole communities of them okay that are all interrelated with each other <laughs> well i mean you're in a small town i mean there's a you the smaller your town the more likely it's going to be exactly <laughs> um but you know the 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 trick is is maintaining an even when when storytelling is maintaining an even keel of stereotype versus people who break the mold. Now, I particularly don't like the elven stereotype. The, the I, I, it's, it's weird. I don't like the stereotype of the, interesting. I don't like the stereotype of the Ventru, pompous assholes. Don't like the stereotype of the Silverfangs, pompous assholes. Don't like the stereotype of elves, pompous assholes. 
I don't like it. I don't like it because I just, I can't see a community of pompous assholes. <laughs> I, I've, yeah, I mean, again, th- this is the the challenge with 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 any of the, the the clans and kind of the in the stereotypes and where they kind of fit in is that the I mean I, I guess if you look at it from the the vampire side of things you're siring people so meaning that you are choosing people who you specifically who you feel like are going to fit with your clan touche okay it's different very different with uh tribes Okay, because yeah, where you're born into you, it. you don't get to choose who your parents were. Yeah. All right. You get to kind of choose who you make. You don't get to choose who made you. Well played, sir. Very true. With vampires, you're right. As as a vampire, I would want someone who imbibes my values, my beliefs, and would fit in nicely with our new brethren. I don't want to make the, 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 the fucking renegade asshole. You're not going to go, you know, you're, you're probably not going to go just sire anybody off the street or like the fry guy at the McDonald's that you went to or something like that. Yeah, like, you're, you're going to pick someone. You're, who... you're, you're, go- you're going to canvas them. You're going to make sure that they fit with what you want, and then you're going to sire them. So for Vampire, there's a point. For Vampire, we'll give... mark one up for Aaron. No one can see it. I just licked my tongue and, and did like a scratch on the... On the chalkboard, um, so and that doesn't mean that the fry guy at McDonald's couldn't make a great venture. But I'm just they could, that. they could be cold, incalculated, and maybe be a pompous asshole. But the the venture tend to target money. The thing is, is that as venture they tend to target money. But people with money are different. Like I I, I work with people. Think, who, think think more politician, less uh you know because mm. they they kind of sit in that that sort of realm. Politicians money. High powered business executives, exactly things like that. And the, and the funny thing is, I I work with some high powered business executives. I do. I, I I talk to my CEO on a weekly basis. The man makes more money than I could probably know what to do with. Right? He's not a pompous asshole. He's a good old Kentucky boy. I I shit you not. He is like he's even got the the Kentucky drawl. Um, you know you can. It just goes to show that, you know, just because someone has money or wealth doesn't mean they're an asshole. You can't just book by its cover. Exactly. Which is where we come into the stereotyping here. <laughs> exactly. Well, no, this is all part of the discussion of, of breaking stereotypes. Now, as a storyteller, I typically, you know, don't try to adhere too much to stereotypes, especially when it comes to, like, elven communities, right, or dwarven communities because i i i i try to follow along some stereotypes okay but at the same regard i make sure that there's always people who break that mold and i always say that this is a person first right who were their parents how did they grow up did they do because i'm sorry there there are some dwarves out there who are going to be very humble hard-working people and there's some dwarves out there who are going to be some pompous assholes because they were born into royalty and have never had to wipe their own keister but i think that that's where you go from so like again you, this is the level up your gaming podcast so level one i'm just starting to role play dig into the stereotypes use them because they're there and and have so so level one dig into stereotypes use them they're there it is it is to build the world and your lore of the world and your understanding of the world but have one person who breaks the mold have one person just one start off with one but this is level two, level three, okay? Now we're starting to evolve our stories. Now it is time, just like Jared did in his in his game, the, the, the dwarf game that he did uh, for our group, he had very stereotypical dwarves, except for this one guy and his brother, okay? Like, it was those two people broke the mold, okay? Actually, there were a ton of people in... Because... Uh, Remember the 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 girl at the, who lived at the edge of the uh, the forest? She broke a mold. I she had did, lots she, of people who broke molds. Well, sorry, yes, you had more people who broke molds, but you had people who s- sort of respected. I guess I guess you had people who were like like these people were definitively outside the mold, mm-hmm. and then these people were were within like the boundaries. But like if you had like a big uh, circle, I suppose they were moving closer to the edge of the circle, right? And that then that was the thing. But when I build Vatfang, I started with people. I said, 
who's this person's mother? Who's this person's father? And again, that's what you should be striving to get to when you are building your world. Like today, level one, I'm just starting to role play. This is when you should be saying, okay, what, how are all of these races, classes, everything perceived? Yes. Okay. And then as you start to tell stories, then you start saying, you, you'll probably end up with the question, why can't I have an orc mage? Okay. Or, or a half orc mage. Or why can't I do, you know, why can't this, this be a, a Ventru who is, you know, you know, very artistic. Okay. And the, the answer to that is, is you then have to start to, to break and bend the rules. So in the, in the concept of world of darkness, um, one of the ways that you can do that is to, because the, 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 the problem with the Ventru is that the Ventru are sort of defined that their stereotype is complemented by their powers. Right. Okay. And the same thing sort of happens when you start to stereotype, you know, the elven, the half elf bard. Okay. That's the, or the, the half orc uh, fighter or barbarian. Okay. Those become stereotypes because the, the synergies between what the, the book tells you is there and the powers that are given match. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to break out of that mold and say, I can have the artistic half-orc or I could have the artistic Ventru. And in order to do that, you might have to present some leeway and grace as a GM to then say, okay, you can maybe choose some powers that are more in line with that that, that suit. So it, it kind of matches with the the theme you're going for if not you're just playing i guess i guess you would just be playing the character you can play the character you can give the character any personality that you want to give them Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day the core of what you are is still in what's behind the, the sheet as well so like your actions might not match up with your character's uh philosophy and motivation and and how you play it so you w- sort of want to try to balance the, those two worlds. You want to make sure that, that, that the sheet is reflective of the person that I'm trying to portray. That was deep. Mathematical, but deep. But it's true. You, you don't want just to be like... It's, it's, what, it's easier when you're trying to present NPCs that break the mold. Right. Okay? Because you might not have a stat line for your NPCs. You're damn right. Okay, nah, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now the, the dirty little secret is I've got like maybe one stat line planned in like my entire large game. Get the okay. fuck out. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Seriously? I mean, maybe. Sadio? I've got like, like, I've got like a handful of them. As for that? No way. In, mo- in most games, I have like very little stat lines planned out. I'll, I'll say that much. I typically I've you know a couple, but all of them are antagonists, like specific antagonists. Like that, that I'm, that, I'm about that, to fight you. That's what I mean. Like I mean, I don't have it for you know this person. I don't expect you to fight. Yeah. Like when when you guys you know come into the uh, for example uh, in one of our games where they they went after the Mothman. Yeah, I said it, the Mothman. You know, like there was a, a sheriff who was an antagonist and <laughs> kept yelling at Aaron, kind of bidding it. Um, and he had no stat line because, like, I'm like, well, if Aaron slugs him, like, I'm going to roll, like, one die to dodge because. You, you you have a general idea of how many dice you'd probably roll, but, like, I don't have powers for most of these. Movies. No, God, no. I, I, I haven't I haven't statted them up. I haven't figured them out because it's it's not worth your time to marry that concept with their personality it's very true okay it is if you are a character trying to break your mold out of your stereotype or trying to do something different out of your stereotype so i get i guess this this divulges into two pieces if you're the gm trying to break stereotypes much easier because it's easy for you to present a ventru that isn't a snooty asshole mm-hmm. okay that isn't trying to aspire for the top of the food chain and the powerful prince of the city okay but instead is artistic and and wonderful. It's easy to present that half-orc mage 
because I can present it without ever having to show you the stats behind it. Yes. Okay. But if you want to create that character and you God, want to be, it is way more difficult. If you want to create that character, you want to become that character. Not only do you have to portray it, which is the easier of the two parts, I would say, mm -hmm. but you have to be able to marry what your stats would say. And it's much harder from a player aspect than from a storyteller aspect. Cause you're right. I don't, I don't have to marry those two. I don't, I just build it. <laughs> I just go, it, it works period. Like it, it, it's interesting to take it in from the player perspective. Um, and you know, I, I would like to encourage GMs to encourage those players who want to break those molds. I mean, you know we've talked I mean? about this before in a Have sense. We? Yes. We've talked about how, how to, how to sort of like be like, like what if you wanted to play a game of all paladins, which was the game that I proposed, but instead of being all paladins that are paladin class, the, each paladin does something different. They sort of re represent the class you sort of want them to become. So you get certain benefits from the paladin tree, but you can also sort of marry concepts from like maybe mages. I don't know. Like you, you, you can think about it in that in that regard. Now, obviously, paladins in general are typically more tanky than a mage. Mages are typically glass cannons in D anD. d But it would be interesting to play that concept where like maybe you're getting more a more of a, a hit point pool but you're able to uh you know cast the same magics that a mage would be and then you then then you have this very unique situation where like 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 we are this this group of like like the the, the 12 paladins okay this is a massive table now um <laughs> that is a huge fucking yeah table. but but you are you are renowned for being that group, it's very, you know, kind of like it could be like a symbol of hope that like the 12 paladins have appeared and like, you know, uh, just a side note for for all uh, storytellers out there everywhere, because when I was young, I made a game where the players match to a specific number of something. Right. OK, <laughs> like Aaron's 12 paladins. Thank God the 12 paladins have risen. OK. Don't do not do that. Don't. Because here was the problem that I had. That game ran over the course of like a year and we had don't, players. Don't define the number of things no you things. need to have. Okay? Because J Jared had 16 players at some point, I think, for that. It was, it was like 12. Yeah. It was ridiculous. And then you lost players as we started playing. And so like their special item... Yeah, to, that was eventually going to sort of Voltron into like a massive. Okay, sword. I was young. I was all right. I, I I'm just I'm I'm. It I'm was Voltron to... though. It was it was very uh, it was very um uh Power Rangers. The, our, it... our dinosaurs combined, <laughs> and then like three players dropped out, and you know they just life took them in different directions. And then we ended up taking their their special. They're called fetishes in in White Wolf. But we took we took their special like magic items and we threw them in a vault somewhere. So yeah, we're like we can't carry all this shit around. We, we, <laughs> we can't carry it. It's, it. These are big and heavy. Uh, <laughs> it was bad. It was so. But don't 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 make that mistake. I made that mistake, um, and I learned from it. I was like, never again will I depend my entire story. My story was based on how many fucking players I had. It literally was because, like, the, the, the epic was at the end, our powers combined, um, and I had, you know, like, six out of the 12 players I started with. But, like, this would be more like like you're part of, like, like the Silver Clan or something like that. And, like, you know, like, or the Knights of Silver, okay. There we go. That's, that's good. Just don't, don't put a fucking number on it. Trust me. Yeah. So it's, it's like every time that I'm, like, in, in this podcast when I try to list shit off and I'm, like, step number one. And then step number two, and I'm like, shit, I forgot what three, four, and five were. And I, and, and of course, they started with like, it, this is five points that you need to remember. And it's like one, two, uh, ah, shit. Bar we barely made it through two. So yeah, it, it, I never remember. Don't, don't, don't do that. It is, trust me, it's a, it's a pitfall. It's a trap. But it, it would just be very unique because then you would always be like beholden to the church and like, like you'd have like a special, you effectively create this sort of special tie based upon the character classes mm -hmm. with and each one breaks the mold in terms of what the character would be because here's the thing and, and i think that works out very well for d for D, &D. i think it really does the the idea of marrying a class because here's the thing it, it's what is the core concept right of of a paladin it's not we're tanky 
No. The core concept of a paladin is the idea of a religious warrior. In D&D, it's the oath. They're all about oaths and being, you know, lawful good and like the, the their their character creation and concept is all about being Exactly. You you got to take it out of the formulaic mathematic of it and and go to the soul of it. It's 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 about people. They nobody walked up to the great paladin council and said I want to be able to for people to just like slam on my shield a lot, and uh, I'm going to get a couple of friends who are going to shoot over my shoulder. No, they walk in going, "I will give my life for God." But the but the great- for Moradan, you know uh, th- that that's that's the and I think that's a really cool idea, the idea of like, you know, it goes more to the soul of the class. Rangers aren't aren't are. It's like I'm going to be really good at shooting bows nobody becomes a ranger because they want to shoot a bow people become rangers because they they want to go explore the unknown to see sights in nature that are beyond even like that's actually really cool because you could do such interesting stories um if you had just focused on that you could have the the benefit of doing that and breaking that stereotype and saying that you cannot well you're a ranger, so you can't be the mage, and you know you can't do this. But like, blah, be blah, a blah. mage, but he is a ranger, and marrying yeah. the two classes. I think the, it's a great the, idea. The, the reason why that tends to work better, and it worked in the vampire game I did briefly, where I made you all bruja, and you were able to choose your own powers or whatever, and you got to basically pick your own design, is that the players have commonality amongst them, which makes it much easier for them to work together. Yes. Um, and then their concepts are able to then so like the problem in vampire the problem in uh it's le- less problematic in werewolf but the problem in vampire specifically is that that you have the two fa- you have the the two factions that aren't the independent clans okay which are the sabat which are supposed to be bad and camarilla which are just less bad <laughs> um <laughs> camarilla who, who just want to exploit people they don't want to burn the world <laughs> okay and the problem is, is that within the camaria it's a giant game of, of fuck your neighbor okay it is it's in even if you formed a coterie of like which is the, a vampire party if you're wondering what that is yeah um if you form a coterie of like all these different clans you're then still stuck with I, they all have their own interests because of the stereotypes built into the clans. It does. And so it's very, very hard where unless you're really starting to... So again, one way you could break the mold is by saying that each player is uniquely individual and that you should all have motivations that sort of intersect one another. So you would have reason to sort of break out of your clan and become more of this coterie and work towards the goal of the coterie. Or you say, you know what? fuck it, you're all just this clan. Just make whatever character you want to make within the clan, okay? Because then you've given them all reason to work together without having to work around, like, like more complex character motivations behind the sheet. Um, and so you get rid of this whole stereotyping stuff. And it, 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 I, I've it, always found it difficult because of the stereotypes and, and because of vampire and the, the whole in, in inherent society of vampire where it's like, fuck your neighbor. Um, like it, it, and even even if you were all the same clan, it's still, still there's still a lot of fuck your neighbor because vampire is a very dark game. Okay, it vampire is. is built around you know. I've never been part of a vampire game that centers around more of a story beyond um you know political um aspirations within the city and things like that. Um, like you know, try, and trying to to establish yourself and gain power within the ranks of vampire, yeah. which is very much the game that is vampire. And you have the werewolf game, which is different. And again, werewolf has its stereotypes. Oh my god, the Were, werewolf, werewolf has horrible. has all sorts of crazy stereotypes that are like, uh, I mean, they're they're, they're no, stereoty- I, I, I I want to mash werewolf stereotypes in the face. You you did you did a very good job of explaining several podcasts ago why you, if you did a werewolf game today how like because there are so few of them you would be very different about the society that it'd be was. hugely different I'm I'm just saying based off of my studies of of uh, you know insurgencies uh, 
you know, like I, I've read like 15 books from like generals and stuff like that. And, and, and about the culture of the, I'm, I'm very, uh, for our listeners who don't know, I'm very interested in the, in the Afghan war, um, the, uh, or the global war on terror, uh, specifically the Afghanistan theater. Um, and, uh, just reading about uh, even the culture there, books of, about the culture of the Taliban, of uh, of Afghanistan as a whole, and how its tribal makeup is very important to understand to understand the entire complexity of what of whatever uh, men and women were dealing with over there. But uh, yes, it'd be very different. But I, I hate the stereotypes. I hate the 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 the. the the you have to be this in werewolf and and the glass walkers are all good at technology just because i'm born you know you could be born to a fucking rocket scientist and have no interest i mean actually how many stories of uh, you know popular culture surround around the the man rebelling against the family business you know what i mean Uh, or read read some classical books you know what I mean? It's it's the no father. I shall not follow in your footsteps, and 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 be a lawyer. You know, or, or you know, follow with what everyone else is doing. And it is that's why werewolf tribes upset me the most when it comes to stereotyping. Um, but it, I just I always want to encourage our our listeners to to look beyond from the storytelling because I think you have covered the player aspect spot on but like take it i i always want to encourage our 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 players to take those those stereotypes and yes they're they have some uses if i need a quick npc right and i'm just like shit my players went left right and Mm -hmm. they're walking into a tavern Uh, i need to make a dwarven bartender real quick guess what he's gonna sound like this i'm i'm a dwarf what do you have you know, it, he's going to have the gruff voice and he's going to be curt and a little bit ornery, right? That's the dwarf. Why? Why do I use I need it fast. I need, I need it now. I don't have time um, to think about how to break the mold on this tavern keeper. Exactly. Like, I, I'm not, I, I don't got time. But when I have time to develop very interesting and complex NPCs, even NPCs that maybe my players aren't going to be, aren't going to be central to the story. It's so cool for my players to be able to interact with a, with a person. That was one of the things that Brian uh, pointed out about the whole Vat thing thing. He's like, I felt I was interacting with people, you know, people. And that's the thing. People are, are, are these complex organisms that will shock and amaze you in my personal opinion. I, I have a very, I, I hate the world of black and white. I, I think the world is this wonderful shade of gray. Um, you know, the whole damn thing. It, it's very few points. There's this black and white thing. Um, and I think that gray is beautiful. I think that um, the divi- the diversity, the the struggles, the the whole concept of mankind and, and what we have gone through, because as most of our listeners know, I studied history. Um you, you look at us and how much we have evolved just take the globe you know we, we we went from wandering tribes of people who didn't know how to domesticate animals to the dominant species and especially the fact that we we, we suck as animals it it, sh- it blows my mind to this very fucking day that we made it like holy crap we don't have claws we have crappy night vision we don't hear that well we don't even have fangs for god's sakes our canines suck we don't even have an impressive bite force okay we don't but we have opposable thumbs but we have opposable thumbs and this is <laughs> this is but, but so do fucking apes you know no, they, they, don't. they don't have opposable no. thumbs monkeys they don't know they Mon- fix the, their theirs are fixed these two things have made us a dominant and a brain. These two things, <laughs> but like, how did we not just get eaten alive by bears centuries ago? Is is shocking to me, and I think it's beautiful. And it, I I really think that a lot of the beauty of our whole world comes from the interesting, weird people. Not weird. I'm not going to say that. The interesting and diverse people we meet along the way. You know, who break the mold. Uh, I, I work with one coworker, right? He comes from uh, 
a, a very small community like my own, um, it, it's it's weird. He and I mirror each other in a lot of ways, but this guy will, he's into sports. He is probably has, if you want to hear dirty jokes all day long, he he's just like a never ending volume, right? He's a man's man. He's a guy's guy. That's who he is, right? Um, he is deeply religious. He and I get into religious conversations because he too is a, is a Catholic and we will get into religious conversations about like, what is the true message of, of Paul, right? What is the message that God is trying to project upon us? Um, not to get religious and preachy in the podcast, but like who would ever thought this guy who's like, he could rattle off baseball scores of, of every fucking Yankee who's been around since Babe Ruth. And he's a man's man and blah, blah, blah. But like when he and I sit down, he's like, no, really, I think what God is trying to inform, like, what the fuck? It's, it's weird. It, 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 it's unexpected. And I think it's what brings color. We're to all, this. we're all nerdy in our own way. Jerry. We're all nerdy in our own way. And I think that by bringing diversity and welcoming diversity into your games to break stereotypes and molds is to give your players this wonderfully colorful world. What happens when the, bar tender is not a balding bearded man right who's like six foot whatever and kind of big so i don't know me (laughs) balding with a big beard Uh, (laughs) um and it's instead you know hell just break out of the mold and, and and say you know it's 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 a it's a little person orc what the fuck? Like, it's wonderful and it's new and it's fresh. And it, I, I, but I will always caution my storytellers to, to throttle it. You always got to watch your throttles. You know what I mean? Cause when everyone's diverse and, and new and different, like, trust me, your, your, your cast is going to get unmanageable. Um, and it, it's going to be difficult as a storyteller to be like, shit, uh, this person was this. And no, no, no. Make sure you've got your background. Yeah, quick, I need a quick, I need a dwarf blacksmith. Okay, and he can be nondescript, but make sure that you pepper in that spice of life, that that color uh along the way and 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 don't be afraid to to do that. That's that's beautiful, Jerry. Do you have anything else you want to add to this one? Just that the world is a beautiful patchwork quilt. Thank you. All right. Um, if you enjoyed the episode, uh, if you have any comments on the episode, you can contact us at level up your gaming podcast at gmail.com or facebook.com slash level up your gaming. Um, we do appreciate the comments. We will answer them uh, to the best of our abilities. And we sometimes do episodes off of them. Uh, a la Chris, uh, we did your episode last week. Uh, uh, and, you know, we're happy to do that for anyone else or just answer your questions or just kind of relay your comments and thoughts. Um, also we are on YouTube. If that's your medium of choice for, uh, for watching us or listening to us. So so Jared, consider what kind of splashes of color you want to put into your games and then splash that like button. Well said. Thank you. Um, and, uh, you know, go ahead and, uh, subscribe to us. If you aren't already subscribed, rate the podcast. If uh, you haven't done so, we would appreciate it. Uh, again, do that on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser or wherever you can rate the podcast. Um, and uh, stay tuned. Keep listening for more great content. So that's going to wrap us up for the week. For Jared, I'm Aaron. Have a great week, everyone. Have a great week, everyone.